13 through 17 is what we will embrace with laughs and accent in Psalm 33. Yes, amen. 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 Need more time, say wait. Praise the Lord, they that wait upon the Lord. Amen. James chapter 4, verse 13. The word of God reads, Go to now, ye that say, Today or tomorrow we will go to such a city and continue there a year, and buy and sell and get gain. Yes, Whereas ye know not what shall be on the morrow, for what is your life? It is even a vapor that appeareth for a little time, yes, and then vanisheth away. Mm -hmm. For that ye ought to say, if the Lord will, we shall live and do this or that. Mm -hmm. But now you rejoice in your boastings. All such rejoicing is evil. Yes, Therefore to him that knoweth to do good and doeth it not, to him it is sin. Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. Practice what you preach. All right. Something that I would put a title on that practice. What you preach as you take your seat. you to think about what we just read, how we talk about what we're going to do, how we're going to do it, but yet we don't know what tomorrow is going to bring. God is the one who makes plans. It is the Lord who prepares us for where we are, what we will go through, not we ourselves. But we need to learn how not to be ahead of God. We need to understand that you don't know what tomorrow is. We must learn to say if it's the Lord's will. Amen. This is not just a saying, just to fill in the gap. Tomorrow is uncertain. If you really knew what tomorrow would bring, you'd probably do things differently. But because we take it one day at a time, amen, our hope is that we will be here tomorrow. Our hope is that we'll be able to do the things that we <coughs> desire to do. It is not for certain. There are so many people who have lived their lives and set their schedule and didn't know that the next day they were gonna lose a loved one. There's so many of us who've already highlighted what the next week, two weeks is going to be like, not knowing that you're going to catch a cold or that your house is going to burn down or something that you did not predict was going to happen. So with that being said, we must learn how to practice what the Word says if it's the Lord's will. Even Jesus Christ, the Son of God, while praying in the Garden of Gethsemane, said, not my will, but thy will be done. There's no problem asking, no problem praying, but know that the Lord is the one who plans out your coming and your going. I'm blessed today to be able to share a few words with you on this Palm Sunday, this first Sunday, the Sunday before Easter and encourage you to trust in God all the way. Practice what you preach. This is not your Bible. This, this is not your platform for you to, to, to determine 
what life is going to be like for other people. Amen. We must learn to embrace that it is if it's God's will. And know that change can come. And when change does come, introduce your change to your God. Because God knows how long your change will be. God knows how long your oppressors will be your oppressors. God knows when he will make your enemies your footstool. It is God's will. Give an honor to God, to all of our ministers, to our deacons, to the body of Christ. We thank God just for this day. Amen. Amen. Many of you are giving out palm leaves. And if you know me, uh, I really don't preach current events. I don't preach calendar. If you know me, many Sundays as you come in here, God has a word for us. And, and I don't preach uh, in, in a way to where the repetition of the pastor preached that last week. Pastor preached that a year ago. Because the Lord has given us a word that is on time. Yes, that is fit for right now, that prepares us for what we will see in the days to come. You don't know the time yet, it's because you're, you're really not trusting in him, you're trusting in your ability, your, your conscience, your, your, your weekly plan, your yearly plan, okay? I'm going to give this word the way God has given. We're going to look at these scriptures, amen. And then we're going to go and practice what we preach. Because your faith looks like what you believe. And if you believe the word of God, your faith will look like the word of God. If you believe in the spirit of God, which is the Holy Ghost, then your faith will look like you believe in the Holy Ghost. If you believe that God is who he says he is, that he is the creator of all things, that the world is in his hand, then your faith will look like it's all in his hands. What good is it for us to, to stand on a platform and say all the great things and then have no faith to back up all of what you preach? Faith looks like this. It looks like what you believe in. There's some of us who don't believe, and that's what your faith looks like, like you don't believe. There's some of us who, who, who have the outside appearance of what faith really is. You, you look the part, but you don't walk that walk. There is some holes. Your faith looks like Swiss cheese. I want you to know that, that the word of God is sure. See, and I have folk that always challenge what the word says. This is why I always stay in the Bible. Because if it ever become about me as a person, then you'll find some flaws. But if it's about the word of God, we can open up this book and see what thus said the Lord. And if you're not in a position the way you can handle what it says in the word, guess what? That's between you and God. Don't make me the face of your faithlessness. Amen. Really, the word stands by itself. And God says, he said, don't add anything to it. Don't take anything away from it. Don't, don't get it twisted. Amen. God has appointed me and God has placed me. Amen. But I know it was him and not myself. So, so when all else fails, guess who I look to? I look to him. Because he was the one who formed me in my mother's womb. He was the one that called me into the ministry. He was the one who opened doors for me. That's why I keep on working. That's why I keep on going. Because God keeps making a way. When your faith is founded on emptiness, you will get to a place where the void will show itself. But as long as your faith is in God, is in his word, it will continue to show because his word will return to him what? Oh. It will do out what God purposed it to do. Yes, sir, yes, sir. So guess what? I can't tell you what tomorrow is going to be like. Amen. But I can tell you whatever the Lord's will is, it will come to pass. Amen. Yes, we can talk about some things that we can do together. Amen. We're going to spend some family time together. Amen. And we, 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 I hope we can if the Lord will. Amen. Amen. Right. Spend some family time together. Amen. There are some folk who have buried some of their family members in this time thinking they had more time. Yes, sir. But that was not God's will. No, and you can't wrestle with that. 
Because if you're saying, God, I wish you didn't take my mama. I wish mama, and it's 10 years later. It's 12 years later. If my mama was here, oh, I miss my mom. She miss you too. But guess what? Her faith got her where she is. Where did your faith have you? Practice what you preach. Preachers, it's very important for us to trust in God's word. Let me throw some disappointment in, in your lap. When, when you believe God, amen, and you stood on his word, amen, but it didn't happen the way that you planned. Yeah. Oh, Lord, have mercy. Yeah. Some, some of y'all missed that. Oh, no. The way you planned. You can't plan out God's word to fit your life. You, you can't. You, that, that means that you are the administrator. That, that, mean, that means that you have, you have taken his word and now have built yourself to be what you think you should be. Amen. But let me let you know, every time that, that, that you step out of your house, there may be a little rain one day. There may be sunshine the next. There may be snow. There may be hell. There may, may be thunderstorms and, and earthquakes and tragedies. Amen. Guess who controls all of that? It's all in God's hands. But if I trust in God, I know no matter what's happening on the outside, he's prepared me to be what he created me to be, whether it's good or bad. My faith shouldn't change because it's raining outside. My, my faith shouldn't change because the doctor said I have something. God knew I was going to have it. Amen. Now what are you going to do with it? I'm going to show what I have, my faith in God. No weapon formed against me shall prosper. And I'm feeling like I'm needing to defend my, myself and my position. Then I, I need to make sure that my position is in God. Because God may allow the enemy to overtake me in order that, that he can show his power to deliver. How many times have you ever seen it written? Even Paul, writing from prison, we're, we're preaching Paul's message, but he spent most of his ministry in jail. Yes, sir, yes, sir. And we free, <laughs> talking about what God is going to do and how he's going to do it. Oh, Lord. Thinking that the revelation that came to us is what's going to happen if it's God's oh, will. Right. Hey, man, I can walk into a hospital. I can pray. I can ask God to deliver. But I have to understand that if it's their time, God's will will prevail. This is not magic. This is not, this is not cine, uh, cinematography. This is about faith. And what God said, without faith, it is impossible for us to please him. You're going to have to accept God's word. You're going to have to believe God's word. You're going to have to have faith in his word. What happens when God allowed bad things to happen to me? Has he forgotten me? No, he hasn't forgotten you. Did he forget Job? In fact, he said, have you considered my servant Job? And all that what Job went through, some of us have built our life and our faith on. Well, if it happened to Job, amen. But you ain't suffered like Job has suffered. You haven't suffered like Jesus has suffered. Amen. God has kept you, amen? Yes. Recognize who you are. Recognize where you stand with God's word. And practice what you preach. Oh, Lord. The gospel is never given to us, given to us in order to corrupt us. Right. It's what heals us. Yes. Amen. It helps us to see who God is. Yeah. Right. For God so loved the world. Yes. Not for the world to love itself. The world can't save itself. Praise the Lord. Be careful of the messages that are out there on how you can save the world. The only person that can save the world is Jesus. He tells us how we are saved by believing in the Son. Do you believe in him? Because if you believe in him, you shall be saved. But if you believe not, you are condemned already. And there are people that are in our faces. There are people that are sitting in prominent positions who don't believe God. But they will. Because according to the response of reading, every knee shall bow. Every tongue shall confess that Jesus Christ is in Lord. Amen. 
You are the front line of your household. You need to make sure that your house knows Jesus and has faith in God. Well, well, well. 13 says, go to now. Ye say that today or tomorrow we'll, we will go into such a city and continue there a year uh -huh. by sell gain. How many of us have prophesied to ourselves on what we are going to do? Some of us stood at the beginning of this year talking about how great it is going to be and all the things that you were going to do. But look at us now. We're at the mercy of God. Amen. We're not at the mercy of of the virus or disease, we're at the mercy of God. Can you continue to have faith and follow God when your plans have been changed? Can you recognize that He is in control when you are able to do what you want to do when you want to do it? Do you have the faith to go through the storms as if you had the faith that you had when the storms were not here? If you're trusting in God, and you're putting him first. Matthew 6 and 33 says, Seek ye first the kingdom of God, and his righteousness and all of these things shall be added unto you. Everything that you need is in him. you got to seek him. Can I get a witness? Social distances, you need to seek him. Can I get a witness? I was in the line at H-E-B, the grocery store. Now, I already been standing in the rain, six feet apart in the rain just to get a few things for the house. I didn't even need a buggy, but I had to stand in the rain. Amen. I stood out there and I said, Lord, I said, don't let this rain cause me to get sick. Somebody gonna think I got corona. <laughs> I finally made it up to the line at the door and the woman stopped one person. I was like, oh, Lord. Yeah. We come all the way up and I had to wait some more. Yes, sir. I'm going to let you know there's no problem in waiting when you know who your help is. Start to love giving me strength. Wait a little longer. And when the person said, all right, you can go, I didn't even look at the person. I just did I'm walking. I walked on in, and the person was trying to hand out stuff. I didn't even need it. I walked on past it. I didn't have a buggy. What I'm going to do, wipe me? <laughs> So I went to my aisle and I, I went and got what I needed. And next thing I had to do was wait on the inside. Uh, I'm waiting on the outside. Now I'm waiting on the inside. So I waited. I waited. And when it got to my time to check, the person that was checking me out said, don't come too close. I almost got offended. <laughs> Cause she didn't look like me. I almost got offended. What you mean don't get too close? Yeah. Yeah. Amen. Praise God. It was almost like a sign saying, you don't purchase here. Yeah. But I obeyed. And I kept my distance. And I put my one item on there. She rang up my one item and tossed that one item down to the person at the end. Asked me to meet in the middle, slide my money in. I slide my money in. She didn't give me my change. She slid my change back. And I walked to the end where my one item was and got my one item and they said, have a nice day. Which was their job. Considering what is going on. I had to swallow my pride. Because this is not about the people. I had to swallow my pride. Because it ain't about me. Lord, if you will it, we ought to be able to have faith enough to practice what we preach. Can I go through a storm and still glorify God? Can I go through horrendous uh, situation and still be an example to the world and the environment that is in? As I walked out of the store and went to my truck, I tossed my item in there, got in my truck, went back to thinking about those who are less fortunate. Mm -hmm. Went back to praying, asking God for mercy. Hallelujah. Because we were all in the same boat. Yes. Yes. But you got to do what? Practice what you preach. If you're a child of God, you can't stop being a child of God. Yes. 
I'm glad the governor understood that, that, that worship is essential yeah. to a believer who is covering the world. To the perfect man that is praying that who God is listening to. God, this, this is important for us to cover one another. Practice what you preach. He says you don't know what tomorrow will bring. For our life is a vapor that appears for a little time. For that ye ought to say, if the Lord will, we shall live and do this and do that. Now, nowhere it doesn't say here, don't plan. But we need to know that our plans can change. Yes, yes. And that's where if the Lord wills come out. Right. Uh -huh. yes, Not because we're in control, but he's right. in control. Right. And if God concerns on what I'm talking about, then it will be done according to his will. Yes. Can I get a witness? Yes. Ooh, let, me, let me walk it like this. If I ask God for it, he doesn't give it to me then, that is not my right to go and steal it. That's not his will. Thou should not what? Praise the Lord. So I have to learn to understand, I, God, I planned for it on this day, and it just didn't happen that way, so I can be patient. I'm just going to wait in this line. I'm going to wait till it's my turn. Amen. God's going to let me inside. Amen. And if I have to wait on the inside, I'm going to wait on the inside. Why? Because God is governing me over my life and my obedience to his will. Yes, if yes. you said yes and God said no, then you need to wait on the Lord. Don't get so anxious and don't let your pride be so, so much to where your pride becomes your ministry. Amen. Because you can get what you want if you want it. That's what the devil sowed Eve in the garden. Yes, sir. Because God knows the day that you eat of that, you'll be like unto him. You can do what you want to do. Amen. Don't be foolish to think that our God is our, our opposition. I'm going to do it anyway. That's a big caution. Yes. Because when you do it anyway, now you brought harm on everybody that's connected to you. Yes. Financially, some of us have made that decision. Well, God said wait or God said no and you made it happen anyway and now you four years coming out of the debt of something that you had to have. Oh, they that wait upon the Lord he shall renew their strength. Yes. Amen? Amen. Amen. Mm. Preach pastor. Yes. You just spoke to me. Some of us are victims. <laughs> Some of us are victims. Let's turn to Psalm 33. Yes. Thirty-three. Verse six is where we want to be, but I'm going to go up to, to verse one. It says, "Rejoice in the Lord, O ye righteous, for praise is coming for the upright. Praise the Lord with the heart. Uh -huh. Sing unto Him with psaltery and with instruments and ten strings. Sing unto Him a new song. Play skillfully with a loud noise." For the word of the Lord is what? Right. 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 And all his works are done in what? Truth. Truth. Yes, he loveth righteousness and judgment. The earth is full of the goodness of the Lord. Yes, Can I count on his word? Yes. Yes. Look at verse 6. By the word of the Lord yes, yes. were the heavens made yes, and all the hosts of them by the breath of his mouth, speak on my life. Not my will, but thy will be done. Amen. I have to, I have to accept that that if God says, because I can't, I cannot, I cannot say what's going to happen tomorrow. But God holds my tomorrow. If the Lord will it, it will be done. So it will be so. If it's according to his will. Yes, sir. Speak on my life, God. Yes, sir. With the words of your mouth. This is, this is, this is where my hope is. Oh, is that the Lord speak over my life. Amen. Yes, we got to learn how to let God be God in our life. Yes, He's the administrator. He's the one who gave me the thought. 
He's the one that, that ordered my steps. He's the one that guided and protected me. He's the one who brought me back safely. He's the one who, who started me on my way. He's the one by his words. Amen? The power is in God's words. And the Holy Spirit hears what the Lord is saying concerning thee. Do you know that God is speaking into your life what you see today? Can you catch that? He woke me up this morning, but for what? Did he wake me up to sin? Did, did he wake me up to carry on? Knowing the devil is, 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 is messing up your, your, your line, amen, to where God has spoke something in your life, but you're doing the opposite. Yeah. Oh, Knowing the devil is interfering with the communication, that what God is speaking in your life is retarded because my life is not founded on his will, meaning my faith is not in him. When your faith is not in him, Satan, just like the talked about the sower, how he sowed some seeds and he came in there and casted his on top of that, Satan interferes with the unbeliever. He interferes. This is why there's contention amongst people that seem like they're working together. Ooh, boy, let me let me stay right there. We, we look like we are together, but really we at war. How is that possible when you give the appearance that everything is good, but on the inside is shaking, it's tore up? Because the enemy is interfering with God's will. How is it we can agree on the things of God and say amen and then go opposite ways? Because the enemy is interfering with the will of God. But not on the believer. But not in the believer. Because the believer makes himself subjected to the will of God. You might have mumbled today, but look at where you are. Can I get a witness? Lord, you want peace in your life? Be a peace giver. You can't expect peace to be in your life if you're not practicing peace. Practice what you preach. You don't hold tomorrow in your hand. The very one that you're at odds with will be the one that you lose because you let the devil come in and separate you from the will of God. Well, y'all better hear me today. Because many of us know something. And because we know something, we can't be told anything. But I want you to know right now that the battle that is really going over your soul is not carnal. The battle that's going over the souls of your brothers and sisters is not fleshly. Stop talking about the world's ways and get in line with God's way and you can deliver us. <laughs> them from the presence of evil. When a person agrees with God and do what God says, then they too are safe. According to God's will. Yeah. But if you oppose from God and you go away from God, then guess who out there waiting for you? Amen. A roaring lion marching up and down to and fro seeking whom he may deliver. Just waiting on you to step out of line with God's will. His conversation with Eve was bait. And because she bit it, they fell. And the same bait that's used to bring you out is the bait that is used to catch you. My mind, I thought about a fisherman. A fisherman never thinks, a real true fisherman sacrifices the bait. If, he get, if he's able to catch one fish or two or three fish with the same bait, <laughs> he's feeling good because I still got more. But the bait is the sacrifice. I want you to picture this and I'll be done. God's word is the bait for the believer. Jesus told his disciples, come out make you fishers of men. The bait is the word. If you believe on the word, you shall be what? Saved. Salvation is connected to the word of God. God continue to draw you out with the truth, not a lie, but the truth. 
And when you believe the truth, amen, you 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 receive what the truth is. Can I get a witness? But the lie, the lie is the bait of the deceiver. There's a way that seemeth right to a man, but the end thereof is destruction. Yield not to temptation, for yielding is what? Satan is baiting you with the lie. The lie almost looks like the truth, but, but they don't quite don't quite fit the mold, amen? It, it, it's the percentage of it and it just don't seem like it is right. The difference between Satan baiting you and God baiting you, God wants to give you life abundantly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Satan wants to take your life. Yeah, yeah. He has nothing else to gain. What good is it for a person, an individual, to say that they follow Satan? Don't you know his end has already been spoken? But you can be delivered if you believe on Jesus Christ. Amen. Fisherman cast out his bait. And a good fisherman knows what to use in order to catch what he's trying to catch. He knows the weight on his line, how deep he want to go. Amen. He, he studied and knows the field of what things that I can add to this in order to, to, to accent it, to make it desirable to that which I'm trying to catch. But the sacrifice is a sacrifice. The sacrifice is not expected to live. It's not expected to make it. That's why I got more bait in the, in, the, in, the, in the boat. Because I'm looking to catch that many fish. Can I get a witness? Y'all better walk with me. So the line is casted out. The word of God. The living word. The Emmanuel. The God with us. His son, amen. The Bible said that through 42 generations, amen, he promised a savior, and the Lord cast it out. His only bait, his only begotten son, in order to save those who would catch hold and believe. Did he catch you? Did he catch you? My pain might have put me in the place, but God knew where my pain was and who my pain was with. And he sent forth Jesus in order to catch me. The song said like this right here, the devil thought he had me, but then Jesus came and grabbed me. God knows where you are. Can I get a witness? Y'all causing me to hurt on the inside. Because this message that needs to go out to the world could go out farther if you believed it. Jesus died on Calvary's cross. Was God's link to all mankind. But it's up to you. It's up to you to take the sacrifice. The bait is Jesus. Practicing what you preach. What, what does that mean, Pastor? It's not you trying to mimic the Bible. Mimic the Word. It's you being the Word. Let this mind that's in Christ Jesus be transformed. You become Christ. Is you becoming the word. My change is connected to me receiving, believing, and applying the word in my life. Not just casting this out to the world. How can I preach one thing and live another? How can I talk about how great God is on the outside, but never allow him to dwell? with me on the inside. What good is it for me to base my schedule on a one day worship? What good is it for me to, to be where I'm supposed to be but resist what God is giving me? You practice. I'll practice. We'll practice. By the word, the Lord framed everything. It says, 
By the word of the Lord were the heavens made, and all the hosts of them by the breath of his mouth. Yes, sir, yes, sir. This is where I close. I want you to, to grab a hold of this. He's already breathed upon you today. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You woke up yeah. when he breathed your name. Yeah. Your body. Some of us got a little pain in our body right now. Amen. God breathed a little pain. Not, not too much. Because he won't give you no more than what you can bear. Right. Amen. He is preparing tomorrow for you. And guess what? It's going to line up with the word. 24 hours or maybe 12 for some of us. God is going to mouth and breathe your name again. If it's his will. Yeah. Yeah. I'm going to have to learn how to thank God for his breath. Oh, yeah. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Ooh, Lord have mercy. Have you ever talked to somebody and they told you about your breath? Amen. <laughs> I'm going to thank God for his breath. Because everything I see, he's breathed it. He's mouthed it. He's spoken it in my life. And I'm going to let that become me. I, I'm going to not only preach it, but I'm going to be it. I, I, I'm not only going to be it, I, I'm going to let God be everything that I am. His breath. His breath. You don't know what tomorrow is going to be like. But let God breathe on your behalf. I'm asking God to breathe a miracle in the world. I'm asking God to breathe mercy. Because he acknowledges us. And Jesus said this. He said, if you ask it in his name, it shall be given. So that means my conversation with God is not void. God concerns and considers the things that I say. And if I'm speaking it according to his word, then it shall be according to his will. Jesus said, he said, anything you ask for in my name, it shall be given. But the devil is trying to snatch you. You don't believe he's trying to snatch you. He's trying to make it major. But God said, it's very minute. I'm more for you than the whole world is against you. Just speak it. And he'll bring it. My children, your children, let God mouth and breathe on them. Stop thinking you got to do it. Because you may not be doing it according to the will. But let God speak on them. Bring their name up before the Lord. Make your petition known to God. Make your request known to God for your children. And watch God mouth and breathe. Your relationship, your marriage. Stop being in control like you can make something happen tomorrow. Let God be God. Yeah. And I know I'm speaking it the way that he's given it today. My advice, my counsel today in this message, we don't have no more than what God allows us to have. Let's practice what we preach. Because if I'm expecting something to happen because I said it, you might be disappointed. But if you expect it because God has said it, yeah. well, my husband don't go to church, darling. I, I'm, I fit the mold, I fit the mold. Of the, of the one who is covering the other because I go to church faithfully. Amen? Let God be the one who, who says that. Don't, don't speak that because in, in your faithfulness there may be some flaws. Amen? Amen. Part, part of the argument at home is, is you started first. Amen? He, he, was, he was sitting there in his own business until, until you, you got that feeling that, that, that something on the inside tell me that something is going on. You better put your inside to the word of God before you tear up your house. Amen? 
you know how it is. We got that gut feeling. Amen. That that gut feeling might have been that lasagna that you ate. Amen. Look into the word of God and speak it. Amen. Let God be God. Amen. Give this last story and I'm done. <laughs> For free. <laughs> Amen. It's in the Bible. There was a son who came to his father and asked for his inheritance. Yeah, he was not the eldest. He, right. he was the youngest. Yeah, and he, didn't, he wanted to live his best life. You know how we can be. He wanted to get out and, and experience the world. Yeah, Amen. The son asked for his inheritance, what is entitled to him. Yeah, and his father loved him enough to allow it to happen. Well, this boy went out there and he squandered everything that he had. You know, you can go out there and have fun and make some, some good and bad decisions. Well, after all of his resources was gone, though those that were partying with him decided that, you know what, we all out of here. We gotta find somebody else to party with. After he had lost all he had, he found himself alone. There, feeding pigs. He found himself not only giving to them, but also eating the same that he was feeding the pigs. In the slop, he, he remembered that those that were servants in his father's house lived better than how he was living at the time. He came to himself, he said, I should go back and I should go apologize to my father. And if he wanted to allow me to be his son, then at least I can be a servant in his house. Well, life messes with us all to where we go out and we plan and we do what we want to do and find out that God's word was true all along. This boy got himself out of the slot and headed his way home. Little did he know that his father saw him from afar off because his father, I'm sure, was waiting for the day yes, to see his child come home. Some of us are the child. We failed at life. We've exhausted all that we have. We're broken. We're at the lowest place and want to come home. We have to get past our pride to do so. Yes, I want you to know, just like how this father is gazing God is always looking out for his children. Yeah. Black, white, brown, yeah. green, Asian, African, European. God is always looking out to see who will come to themselves and come home. When he saw his son from far off, he ran out. He ran out in order to meet him. I'm giving this to you because when time comes where life has taught us some of our best lessons through worst experiences, we need God's word to be the truth that it is, the truth that it was, and the truth that it ever will be. Your love, the love of this father to where I'd already pardoned you he made it to his son and kissed him, and his son tried to tell his story. Yeah. But his father already knew, no matter what you tell me, I'm more thankful because you came back home. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. He was forgiven on the spot. Yes, he was forgiven on the spot. Yes, sir. Practice what you preach. Well, church, don't be slow to forgive. Don't be slow doing what the Lord has already commanded us to do, to love one another. Don't be slow being the type of Christian that continues to be God's truth, his word, his living word. The same bait that he used to get you is the same bait that he used to save others like you. I want you to
to know right now, without a shadow of doubt, all of us got a story. But God's word is the truth. I want you to stand on your feet.